Hi there, Facebook fans of the USBGF. Phil Simborg, the USBGF resident teaching pro, with another tip of the day for you. This is a money game, which is the same as an unlimited game, which would be about the same as if it was 11 away, 11 away, or 9 away, 9 away, a normal match score. And red is on roll. And the question is, should red double? And if red doubles, should blue take? In case you don't see it, the pip count is 82 to 82. It's an even pip count, and red is on roll. So what do you think? Should red double? Should blue take? Okay, the answer is it's an easy take. And we always start out by deciding whether or not to take or not because the way you should think about your cube action is always use Woolsey's Law first and ask yourself if he's taking because if you say to yourself here, I think he's dropping, then you know you have a double. Or if you say to yourself, I'm not sure if he's taking or not, then you know you have a double. That's the essence of Woolsey's Law. But if you come to the conclusion that you're sure it's a take, then you have a little bit more work to do. You have to wonder... Do, you, do I have enough market losers? How bad is my position if I don't lose my market? Uh, how good is it if I do lose my market? What does lose my market mean? That means that after this roll, if I don't double, what would happen the next roll? How often would I be in a position where it would be a double and a drop and blue couldn't take? Well, if it happens too much, you're going to be very sorry you didn't double because you're going to end up winning one point when you could have won two and maybe even sometimes four. There's a possibility of some gammons here, but just for getting gammons, you'd be sorry you didn't win two, for example, if you hit here. Well, what are the odds of hitting? You're going to hit 11 times with, with a two, plus you also hit with a double one. You're going to hit 33% of the time. Are you going to win when you hit? Yeah, you're a pretty big favorite to win. You don't win every time, but you win about 33% of the time. What about the race itself? The race is even and you're on roll. What if you don't hit? Well, your favor to win this race, just being on roll in an even race is worth something. Let's just see what it's worth. Let's take the pip count of 8282 and make it into a pure race and take a look. Here's the pip count, 8282. Now there's no chance for a hit. How much of a lead do you think it is to be on roll? What do you think Red's winning percentage is here? Well, if you guessed it's about a 60-40, you're about right. Now, how do we know that? Well, you put it in extreme gamma and you ask the question, and it tells you it's about 60-40. But if you don't have extreme gamma, you learn these things by experience. You learn that in a medium race of around 80 pips, the player on roll gets a, about a 20% advantage. So right off the bat, going to our previous position, if it wasn't a game that had any chance for a shot at all, just in a race, Red's got about a 60% chance of winning. Now you add to that the fact that he can hit and win the game almost every time, uh, a third of the time with the hit, that certainly does make it a double. That's a lot of market losers. There's actually, uh, of all your market losers, you're going to lose your market when you hit. That's 13 rolls. And if you roll double six, double five, double four, double three, and blue doesn't respond with a high double back, then you've lost your market that way too because the next roll you would double and blue would drop. So you simply have enough market losers here. Now, there's a lot of math involved here, but it's simple to say that if you're going to win the game a third of the time, that's 33%, and of the remaining 66% of the time, let's say you're a 60% favorite, so that's about 33% of the time. So what's 66% what's of the remaining games? That's about 13 wins, and plus 13 wins from the initial games, you're going to win about 26 times. If you use math here, that comes out to about 72%. Well, if his take point is 25% uh, and even a little bit less than that, uh, still you're at 72% now. He's at 28%. It doesn't take much to see that you can lose your market. You might even lose your market if you roll something like a 6-5 and he rolls a 2-1. You don't have to hit at all. You just have to roll big and him roll small, and you've lost your market. So at that number, it makes it easy. Now, all this math can sound very complicated. It sounds like a lot of work over the over the table, but... Here's here's one of my favorite sayings. Math is only something that smart people use to make the rest of us feel stupid. Well, the, the truth is backgammon is all math. But you can use logic and reasoning to come to answers on these things too. Logic tells me that I'm winning the race because I'm on roll. And logic tells me that on top of that, I'm going to win when I hit, which I it doesn't take a lot of math to figure out that that's going to be a third of the time or more than a third of the time. It's 13. A third is only 12. So it's... 13 out of 36 times that I'm hitting. And there's some other logic here that I can apply. I know 
that if I roll small numbers, a lot of my small numbers have a 2 in them, and I'll hit them. So if I roll badly in a race, some of those numbers hit. Actually, 11 numbers hit of the 2s that I might roll, plus the double 1. Those are bad racing numbers. So if I'm not going to roll a 2 to hit them, and you take a 2, assume that there's not going to be a 2 on either dice, my average roll goes up pretty high. Because the average roll is 3.5, between 3 and 4. That's where it splits. You have one, two, three, but below in the bottom half, and four, five, six in the top half. Now you take away twos, and there's more rolls on the top half. So if I'm not going to hit them, the odds are I'm going to ro be rolling a pretty good number for the race. So this is one of those just logic things that you can figure out why you're really favored here and why you should double. Let's take a look at the actual numbers. The actual numbers are: it's a big double, a big take. you remember I said it would work out to about. 26 with about 72 percent. Well, the reason it only says 70 percent is because you don't always win when you hit. Once in a great while, blue's going to get a shot from the bar while red's bearing off and win the game, and that brings it down about a one and a half or two percent. So there's your tip of the day. You can use lots of math. You can reason it out. You can be as good as the as the geniuses, or you don't have to be a genius to be pretty good at backgammon if you use logic, if you use your brain, if you think through these kinds of positions. And again, whether you're a genius or not, if you're Albert Einstein, you wouldn't know whether to cube or not cube in these situations until you've studied the game a little bit. You need to know that you're about a 60-40 favorite in a race by just by being on roll, that you get that eight, the average roll is eight pips, and that you have that racing advantage. You need to know that there are eleven twos on the dice, plus a double one that hits. So, if you study and learn the basics, and you use really good logic and common sense, most of the time you don't have to resort. You don't have to stoop so high as to use lots of math. Hope this helps you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.